Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global Monday after fight week. Delighted as always to be joined by Mr. Derek Chisora. How are we, Derek? I'm good, bro. I'm fine. Hi, uh, hi everybody. How are you? The last time I saw you, I was kicking out of my room, wasn't I? Yeah. Hello. And, and, and then you sent me a check for my water bill this morning, so things are forgotten. Water bill, yeah, 100%. How much was he again? Four. Uh, 12 grand. 4.99. <laughs> um, it's only literally been a couple of days, obviously, since your fight with Usyk. First of all, how, how are you feeling physically? Physically, I feel great. Mentally, I feel amazing. And that's it. How quickly did you watch the fight back when you got home? Well, I watched a little bit, you know, but... It was it was a good fight. The fans enjoyed it. You know, everybody was watching it. People loved it. Um, you know, my myself and my opponent we enjoyed it, and uh, I hope guys enjoyed it at home. It was a it was a good fight. I enjoyed it. The whole build up and to the walk to the ring, everything was great. When you were actually watching it back, were you scoring it either in your head or or anything else? No, nah, I just watched it back to hear the commentators. But you know, it is what it is. You know. Um, no, as I said, I said this before with you, I think. I told him, listen, if I don't knock him out, I don't see them giving it to me. You know, I already, I, I knew it, you know. Um, the fight was good. I didn't come there to lay down. And then he kind of, he, he, he knew he was going to be in the fight. In the first round, I straight away went to him. You know, I enjoyed it. I love fighting. I mean, you, you did. You raised some concerns about judging, scoring to... Eddie Hearn in the press conference, which we spoke about the other day as well. But did you, when you watched it back, do you view this as a clear win for you or do you see this as a close fight that could have gone either way? I see it as a close fight. You know, um, I was all over the guy. I put more pressure. I was landing with everything. I was hitting him everywhere. You know, uh, I, I think I chucked more punch than he did. Half of his punches missed. His power shots were missing because I was rolling his power shots. I think he hit me with one power, good power shot. In, in round seven, but that was it. But I was still still rolling. He didn't have any power. He don't have any power, to be honest with you. I asked you after the fight how he would get on with someone like an Anthony Joshua or, or Tyson Fury, etc. Um, you didn't really answer that. What do you think about that now? How does he get on with those kind of guys? Don't eat him up. AJ alone will eat him up. Tyson will eat him up. He hasn't got power. He runs away a lot. Now he's boxing guys are six foot six there. How's he going to get there? He can't get there. They'll eat him up. His style of boxing, he's not made for the heavyweight. That's why most cruiserweights can't make it up there. It'd be, it'd be hard for him. I went to him. You know, if, if I didn't go to him, that would be a stinky fight. You know, I went to him. If there was another heavyweight, it would have been a boring fight. All the way through the camp and the build-up, yourself and David said that you're in the best shape possible. The camp's gone perfectly. Everything was right. So now the fight has happened. You still preserved that you did everything you could have done in the build-up and in, in, in camp. Yeah, man, listen, I say to this, you, I, if I didn't knock this dude out, I'm not going to win. I trained hard. Um... He was moving a lot. You know, I did hit him. My, my, whole, my whole point was destroy the body so we can slow his movement. But he kept on moving. But we kept on tagging him. You know, he kept on moving. You know, I knew marks 12 rounds. They won't give it to me. I have a way. But did I enjoy the fight? Yes, I enjoyed it. I was fit. I was ready to rock and roll. I would have done more rounds afterwards. Is it all about getting that out of your system now and just moving forward to whatever it is that is next? Yeah. But 
you know, for him to, for Usyk to fight AJ, it's one side. AJ will walk through him because AJ's tall. He'll use his longer jab. Be a good fight, but AJ will win it by a knockout. Have you taken any notice of the reaction to your your defeat from Saturday from people in boxing? Have you taken any notice of that over the last day or two? No, I don't really care. You know, I hear people moaning, "Oh, my corner, my this." There's always a there's always something to moan about. You know, if somebody loses, there's something to moan about. If someone wins, there's nothing to moan about. You know, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody. They always got something to say about somebody. You know, they never say anything good after you lost. There's always something. You know, there's always something. People lose a fight, there's always something. Oh man, he was not doing this fair, this and this. There's always something to moan about when you lose a fight. But I'm not going to moan. I don't moan. There's nothing to moan. It was a great fight. People enjoyed it. Do you enjoy it? Yes, thank you. Um... Dillian White made some comments today to say there wasn't enough boxing experience in your corner. Obviously, he's familiar with your head coach because they've worked together in MMA before, but he said there wasn't any specific boxing experience or too much of it in your corner. Yeah, you know, Dillian has got his own opinion. You know, you know he's, he got knocked out in the fifth round. You know, he had all the experience in his corner, but he still got knocked out, he still got laid out. Uh, Everybody's got a, everybody's got their own opinions. To understand, even when you got the best trainers in the corner, Lennox Lewis had the best coach in the corner. He got knocked out by Rackman. Don't matter. You know that's Dylan. Dylan has got something to say to trying to sell his fight with Pavelkin. But it is what it is, man. He needs to worry about fighting Pavelkin right now. And worrying about what other people are doing. Trying to put his name out there. He's got bigger things to deal with. David Hay has said over the last couple of days as well that there's an option for yourself. I don't know about for Dillian, but there's an option there to possibly try and push for a third fight with Dillian. Is that something of interest to you? Listen, um, I say this already, man. I love fighting. You know, if there's somebody to fight, I'm fighting. That's it. There's no, there's no but. Oh, no, this and this. If there's a fight there for me, a big fight which the fans want to see, I'm in it. It's all about the fans. I'm here to entertain everybody for now. How much did you miss that atmosphere that you've had at so many good nights at the O2 and <coughs> wherever else, not having that there the other day? How much of a, a factor was that for you? Depressing, bro. Depressing. Hardcore. It's hard. It's hard. You don't understand how hard it is. You know, no cheers, no booze, you know, no hand clap. It's just hard. It's hard. We need the fans back. We need to get away. We need to get rid of this corona situation and get you guys to come back, man. It's hard, hard, hard. In football, it's hard. In rugby, it's hard. In tennis, it's hard. In boxing, it's more harder because it's just you and the other dude. You could hear the punches. Oh, good one. No, oh, you know, it's hard. Don't care. You know, your abuse of boxing in front of 30,000 and you're boxing there. Now you got about, about at least 25 people in the arena, you know, officials only. It's hard. It's difficult, man. It's hard as hell. But you have to go through that. You know, this is, the, this is how it's going to be for the next, I think, four and a half years. Because that we don't have a clue what's happening in the world. Four and a half years, this was happening. The next time we see fans will be probably in a year and a half in the arenas, trust me. Don't believe the hype. Oh, we got this now, don't believe it. Four and a half years, fans will be allowed back in the arenas. Do you think fights may possibly have to move abroad to places where you can have crowds? That could be an option. Where's that? Like where? Tell me where they having crowds. Where in Vietnam? Where? Tell me where. <laughs> if there's fans anywhere, where? If there's no fans anywhere. Where? If there's fans, there people will go there because people wanna. People will fly there, but there's nowhere. The whole world, there's no fans. 
American football, basketball, there's nothing, nada. It's hard, mate. It's the new, it's the new world we live in now. Um, I think, we're, well, we've read today that the, the targeted opponent for Tyson Fury is your old opponent, Ajit Kavail, for the 5th of December. I think a contract has been sent to him, so he looks like he's the, the possible opponent for Fury. What do you think about that? When in the, or where? At the Royal Albert Hall on the 5th of December. Yeah, it's another sparring day for Tyson. This is going to keep it long. Guy's big, man. Kabai's going to do some serious magic to get a Tyson. <laughs> he is going to do some serious magic. Yeah, Tyson going to just drop him. Okay. Um, have you seen any of the comments from Deontay Wilder over the last couple of days? I sent him a message, to be honest with you. I was like, listen, bro. Wilder. Yeah, Wilder. I was like, listen. Just brush yourself, dust yourself off, man. Just get back in the ring. You know, this whole thing of, you know, next minute you talking about a black empowerment, this and this. This is a fight fight. This is a fight game. You lost a fight. You know what you do? Brush yourself bounce back on you take your rematch you know it's coming with excuses he had this in his glove he had that in his glove water was, water was spiked was the water spiked how does he know the water was spiked the muscle reaction you know this is why this, you know what who knows <laughs> this is why I carry my own water <laughs> I don't trust no one <laughs> yeah I'm telling you, my own water, I bring my own water from my house and I bring the bottles and I wash them four times and I keep it in my room and that's it. You know, but it's just coming with excuses, man. Just take the bro, just take the fight, you go beat. Everybody loses a fight and just come back. Just keep crying about this nonsense, I don't know why. Is he, when is he fighting again? Oh, shit. There's another bro brother gone down the drain. Oh, do you want David now? <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I just wanted a little catch up before, and obviously everyone actually thought that me and you had fallen out, but I said to people it's impossible for us to fall out. So. Yeah, man, you know, you're, you're my compadre, my pal. You know, it's, uh, you're a bit of an arse sometimes, but it is what it is. But you're good, though. I can't kick you out because it's not my my gym, it's David's gym. <laughs> so me kicking you out, you'll be like, what are you kicking him out for? <laughs> but I can't kick you out, but it's okay, though. No, we, we made up, though. We made up. We're cool. Are we cool? I didn't think we'd ever fallen out, to be honest no, with you. We're, just... cool, we're cool, though. We're cool. We're all right. We're all right. Hey, listen, just stay safe. And I'll be probably next time you see me, will be next year. Oh, yeah. Where are you spending Christmas? At home? At home. With, uh, yeah. You're not going to Dubai, like the rest. It is what it is, man. Stay home, stay safe. That's all I can say. Derek Chisora, thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV again, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you soon. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free, impartial advice on all your debt.